Underground in Zambia are some of the world's largest deposits of copper and cobalt. Numerous mines have been established in Zambia's Copper Belt province, bringing in nearly 80% of the country's income. Kitwe is the home to a major copper mine. With the discovery of copper there in the 1920s, the British commenced mining and constructed a railway northward to Kitwe. Greenish gray in cover, the copper ore is still heavily mined, both in open pits and through deep underground mines. I'm on a South African flight from Johannesburg to the capital of Zambia, Lusaka, to explore the copper mine. Oops, we have a small accident on landing and knock over a baggage car. Welcome to the Saka, ladies and gentlemen. Catching a taxi into the city, we pass under the Independence Arch, celebrating 50 years of Zambia's independence. The central city looks Western and modern. We pass a memorial to Kenneth Kuanda, Zambia's first president. We pass along Cairo Road in the central business district and admire some of the larger buildings. Tomorrow, we'll depart for Kitwe, the second largest city. Much of Zambia was purchased by the British around 1900 and named Northern Rhodesia. By the 1950s, the Anglo-African Mining Company had developed the Kitwe as a major mine, producing a vast amount of copper, which was shipped by railway south to South Africa and the seaport of Durban. The Nakana mine at the time was one of the largest copper producers in the world. Some remarkable photographs survive of underground mining and the smelting process in Kitwe during the 1950s. Copper production in Zambia exceeded 600,000 tons by 1965, a substantial amount, making Zambia the second largest copper producer in the world. And Kitwe, an ultra modern western city. Now we'll take a look at some of the open pit mining which is occurring in Kitwe today. The period from 1976 to 1996 was one of progressive declining in mining due to nationalization of the mines and low copper prices. In 1996, the mines were reprivatized and had rapidly begun to expand, particularly with the high copper prices in 2010 and 11. Now we'll take a look at some of the modern techniques used today for the underground mining in the two major shafts. The mines today are heavily mechanized using power equipment and highly skilled staff.
Processing copper in Kitwe, Zambia. The process includes concentrating, smelting, refining, and casting. Zambia is the second largest copper producer in the world after Chile, and Kitwe is a major player in Zambia, with the mine begun in the late 1920s. The process begins with transporting the ore, uh, basketball chunks, on a conveyor belt at around 10,000 tons per hour to the ball mill, where it's broken up into much smaller pieces. The broken down minerals now goes through a flotation process that helps us separate the copper from other minerals and waste rocks. The ore is dissolved in water and chemicals in large tanks. Through this air is bubbled and the copper gradually floats to the surface to be filtered off as a 28% copper solution. The moist copper concentrate is pressed and dried to form a copper powder The concentrate is pressed, filtered, and dried in a massive rotating dryer. After it's done, the material looks a lot like coffee grounds. This the copper concentrate is sent to a flask furnace where it melts. Sulfur, driven off by the process, is captured and used to make sulfuric acid. Heavier copper mat sinks to the bottom while lighter minerals rise to the top to be drained off the slag. A guide explains. And into a flash smelting furnace, where oxygen and temperatures over 2,400 degrees separated into three products. Gases, which contain sulfur, slag, which is mostly silica and iron, and copper combined with sulfur, called matte, which is 70% copper. The matte is flash cooled in water turning it into granules that are then stockpiled in an enclosed dome. The granulated mat is ground up and fed into a flash converting furnace, which removes most of the remaining impurities to produce a molten copper called blister copper. 
Casting furnaces refine it further to 99.5% molten copper. Ninety nine per cent pure copper is good, but getting to ninety nine point nine nine per cent takes a little extra molecular mojo. The anodes are eight square tanks that are designed to conduct electricity. The tanks are filled with an electrolytic solution that creates positive and negative electrical currents, just like the world's biggest car battery. This current causes the pure copper ions to jump to the stainless steel plates. It's a pretty strong attraction. The result is a 99.99% pure copper cathode. These cathodes are stripped away from the stainless steel plates, corrugated, strapped together into 5,000 pound bundles. The copper plate is stripped by machine from the stainless steel backing. Loaded with copper plate, hundreds of trucks leave Zambia weekly for the trip south to the seaport city of Durban in South Africa. From here the copper plate is shipped worldwide for manufacture. With a million tons of copper being shipped annually, Zambia is one of the larger copper producers in the world today.